In this episode of Hands-On Photography, we're gonna talk about all of those little modes on your camera, and then we're gonna talk about how to adjust them and really make your images pop. This is Twit. Hey everybody, I am Ant Pruitt and this is Hands-On Photography here on twit.tv. Thank you all very, very much for hopping in and checking out this week's show. Thank you also for being a loyal subscriber. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that right now. Just open up your favorite podcatcher of choice and hit the subscribe button to get the latest episode of Hands-On Photography each and every week here on twit.tv. Uh, again, last week when we introduced the show, I told you that this is gonna be a quick hitter show that's gonna help you get just enough tips and tricks for the beginner that's not going to overwhelm them and confuse them, but I want them to be comfortable and learn all of the little fundamentals and basics of photography. I know you hobbyists out there and enthusiasts out there already know all of this stuff and you're probably just wishing for me to go ahead and jump into Photoshop and jump into Lightroom and this and that. I get it. But I want to help bring along those beginners too and help them get to where you are. And so we can all be in this community together sharing tips and tricks and helping each other be even better photographers in the long run. All right, so how does that sound? So this week, we're gonna take a look at exposure and we're gonna take a look at the different modes on your camera. If you're holding up your camera, you'll see a bunch of different modes. And right now on the screen, you'll see in the upper left corner, there's an M. That's my camera, that's a Canon camera, it doesn't matter which camera, but that M stands for manual mode. There are a bunch of different modes that you can adjust, such as the automatic mode, aperture priority, or even shutter priority, and they all have different um, functionality. I typically shoot in manual, and I'm gonna keep it in manual for the purpose of this particular demo. The main thing that we need to worry about is this actual exposure triangle here on my screen. There's three elements when it comes to exposure. Uh, most people, when they hear exposure, they think of how bright an image is or how dark an image is. And that's the best way to put it in layman's terms. But when you look at that actual triangle, you'll see there's three elements. First and foremost, let's talk about ISO. ISO is usually what I say. Some people say ISO. I'm gonna say ISO. Um, if you notice at the bottom of the, uh, the ISO arm here, I'm going to show my mouse there. There you go. It has a couple different numbers, and each of those numbers will increment up to a specific value based on whatever your camera is. In this example, it goes up to ISO 6400. What does that mean? ISO, think about if you're staring, in, staring out into a, a dimly lit room your eyes are going to have a certain sensitivity to light and your camera is going to have a certain sensitivity to light. So if you were to crank the lights up inside of your room, your eyes will sort of, you know, fade in, well, well not fade, well, constrict to try to block out the extra light. What ISO is doing is creating artificial light and giving your camera a little more sensitivity to light when it's not necessarily there. That's a good thing. And that's a bad thing, but it depends on the situation and the actual composition of your shot. Next, we're going to talk about aperture here on the uh, exposure triangle. Aperture, you hear it mostly referred to as your f-stops and f-numbers found on your camera. Inside of a camera, you have different elements that move and allows your lens to zoom in and out, but there's also what they call an aperture uh, blade in the back of it and what that does is it allows your cap it allows your lens to capture X amount of light based on that number when you hear someone is shooting at a wide open aperture That means the blades on the back of that lens are open like this When they go to a tighter aperture the blades will close down like so doing so will decrease the amount of light coming in through the lens and hitting the image sensor. There are reasons that you want to use a tighter or high aperture versus using a wide open aperture. And we're gonna show you a couple of examples here right now. So let's hop on over to the camera here and take a look at the settings. 
In this demo, I just grabbed one of my favorite uh, mascots here at the studio. That's our good old Android. And my focus is not necessarily perfect. This composition isn't necessarily perfect, but don't worry about that. That's, that's fine and dandy for now. What I'm more concerned about is if you look on the bottom of the screen, you'll see a 50, which stands for the shutter speed, and 11, which stands for my aperture setting, which is F11. And then off, off over to the right, you'll see the ISO at 6400. Now remember, the higher that ISO number is, it's more light that you're trying to create or uh, manufacture, if you will, for your camera to see. And then the higher that F number, in this case, F11, that means that aperture blade is closed down and is not letting in a lot of light. The reason you want to use a higher F number is you want your frame to be a little more in focus across the board instead of just right there on our little Android. So what I'm gonna do now is just click the shutter and take the photo and let you see what it looks like. That's done. So now let's hop on over here into Lightroom and we'll let you take a look at this image. So here you see the Android is right there. The table is in focus. The background is in focus. You can even catch the little chairs back here. Now, when I change these settings on the camera, and I can do so right here inside of Lightroom, I'll show you this little bar right there. I have my aperture settings right there, and I have my ISO settings. I can also change the shutter, shutter speed, but I won't do so right now. Right now, I'm just going to change the aperture settings. We're going to drop it down to, say, f2.8. OK, like that, f2.8. OK, so that means I have opened up that aperture, and I'm going to let in more light. I did not change the ISO from 6400, so it's still thinking it needs to create 6400 worth of artificial light. So let's go ahead and take a picture, snap. And now let's take a look and see how this image looks. So since I opened up that aperture, I'm allowing a lot more light to come into this image. And as you can see, the scene is pretty bright and pretty blown out. It's not pretty, but it did its job, okay? Next, we need to figure out how to find the balance. If we take a look at this aperture and exposure triangle, the beauty of this exposure triangle is you want to try to have your values come right to center figuring out is it ISO 800 versus 1 20th of a second on the shutter versus F8. You just imagine just having like a little poker chip or something and moving it around on the screen. Wherever you position that poker chip will help you figure out what your image is going to look like. So in this case, we moved it down to F8. So that's gonna get more light there, but we kept the ISO 6400, so it's really bright. So in this instance, we should probably bring that ISO down to a lower number. I see someone in our chat room is saying ISO 400, just for kicks and giggles, I will humor you and change it to that. And let's see what happens. So we'll go to ISO 400, leaving it at F2.8, still not touching the shutter speed. We're gonna save that for another episode. So we're gonna go ahead and hit shutter, snaps, Whoo, that looks way better, right? Not overexposed. It's a little underexposed. It's a little bit dark, but this is something that you could work with and post a lot easier than those blown out highlights and exposure. So this still isn't perfect, but if I wanted to adjust it to say maybe ISO 800, which is what I was thinking, it would probably look a little bit better. So let's go ahead and shoot that. Now, that looks a lot better, okay? Now, when we started this, I told you that using F11 or higher F stop number or higher aperture, it's gonna give you a lot more focus across the frame. And if we go back and we take a look at our little Android, notice the Android is in focus, but the background is a little bit blurry. When you, want to, when you use these lower f-stop numbers, you're going to get what you hear in the smartphone world, a portrait mode effect, or just what we call a shallow depth of field. Everything is a lot more blurred out except for the subject. Now, I'm going to show you on the screen here in comparison to the first shot at f11. There we go. 
and see the difference here. I'll move this out of the way. The difference here, everything is a little more in focus in the background. This is a light on the screen that you see. I, I planted that light in the background on purpose. And you notice you can actually see the housing of the light. Uh, it's a little loom cube light that I have in my backpack that I, and I love that light. In comparison to this one, to now it's just giving you this little bouquet effect, a nice little soft orb, if you will, of light. So that's how you're going to create a shallow depth of field versus creating a more even and focused and sharp image uh, coming out of your camera. So just think about the exposure triangle. Take a look at the F numbers. Take a look at the ISO. ISO is going to deal with the light sensitivity and, in short, the artificial light that you can create for your camera just in case you're in a low-lit environment. The aperture is going to deal with the light that's actually coming through the lens and hitting the image sensor, okay? So one is dealing with real light, one is creating a little more faux lighting, if you will, okay? All right, so that is it for this week's episode of Hands-On Photography. That's just part one. We're still going to come back next week and take a look at this exposure triangle. We're going to talk about the combination of aperture versus shutter speed. And we may even just talk about all three of them together. It's, it's a beautiful thing when you can find that mix based on your composition to figure out what is the exact setting that you need to get the shot that you're trying to work on. Granted, in your camera modes, your camera modes can do a lot of that stuff for you automatically. And you can do that when you're starting out, but I promise you, you'll be a much better photographer if you start to understand what's going on with that exposure triangle. Thank you all for watching. Feel free to hit me up over on Twitter or Instagram. I am ant underscore Pruitt. And uh, if you have any questions, you can also just shoot me an email at hop at twit.tv. I do have one call to action for you though. I want your photos. Send me your, your favorite photo. Let me know um, some of the details on it. Maybe I'll pop it up here on the show and we'll talk about it for a few minutes and share it with all of our other listeners and viewers. So if you have a photo that you really like, send it to me over at hop at twit.tv. Be sure to include your name. If you have a social media handle, include that, as well as the camera that you use and if you have a story behind it. I hope you have a story behind it. All right, folks, catch us here on twit.tv every Thursday, recording at about 2 p.m. Pacific time. I don't know what time that is, Eastern, but you can do the math and uh, hit the subscribe button and check out all of the other shows here on the network, especially Focus on Photography, which just launched today with episode one. Thank you all for all your continued support, and we'll catch you next week. Take care.